Hey gang, welcome back to another video here at Joe Daddy's Garage. If you've been following along the last few weeks, you know that I've been working on this 65 Impala. Now it started off as just needing a radiator replaced, but when the owner showed up at my driveway, there was smoke rolling out of the back wheels. So I said, there's something wrong here, and he asked me to check that out while I was doing other repairs. So I've done a walk around video of this car, so you can go back and look at that if you like. I also did a video on replacing the radiator, and that also led to replacing the trunk seal, <laughs> which now I'm going to be replacing the door seals, because that was asked of me as well. The brakes, the last video I did on those, I replaced the wheel cylinders, the brake shoes, and I went through the details of changing all that out, and also how to bleed the brakes and I ran into a problem and I talked about that briefly in that last video. The problem I had was with the brake hose in the rear and you know the hose is laying here it's all nasty looking and greasy but that hose my assumption was that it had deteriorated and created a blockage and it wasn't allowing fluid to come back out of the wheel cylinders you know, when he had been using the brakes, it just kept pushing pressure into those wheel cylinders and eventually just like almost locked them up. So I replaced that brake hose. Well, I also discovered <laughs> that the master cylinder had issues and I replaced the master cylinder. Now, I didn't do a video on that. It's just a single bolt master cylinder and no booster or anything like that. It's just unbolting it and bolting it on and then bleeding the system again. Well, the good thing is, I've got brakes on the car. I took it for a drive, thing stops fantastic, and so I'm done with all the other stuff that needs to be done to this car, and now I can finish doing the door seals. And this is where I want to talk about some things. Initially, when I looked up the seals to replace, the trunk seal and the door seals, I did a little bit of research, and I found a uh, company that sells those seals. That company was Classic Industry, and this is the receipt from Classic Industry. What's important about this is I want to I want to share some information because I like to give information for you to use with your projects. Now, I had ordered the trunk seal, and I can show you the part number in just a minute. I also ordered Super Weather Strip Adhesive. I did order the front door seals and the rear door seals. Well, the rear door seals were on back order, but let me show you this. This is, and I'll try to get it in here as best I can. Um, where we are. Okay, so there's the part numbers, right? There's the description. And here are the prices. Now, these are internet prices, readily available, and you can see that the pair of front and rear door seals the fronts were $25.99 and the rears were $24.99. This is why this is important. I want to share this. Again, they were they were back ordered. They were you know out of stock. I checked with Summit Racing, they were out of stock. And then I called up or I found Ecklers. And they had them in stock. And there is some value to buying stuff that's in stock. I will say that. However, this is where I get I get really disappointed because the weather stripping, which is the same brand, soft seal, right? If you look, this is the front. Part number two zero zero six right there. You see that? Okay, front seals. $25.99. This is the rear seal. Again, same company, soft seal, same thing, right? Part number 2007 from Classic 2499. 
Ecklers. Check this out. There's the invoice, right? And it was, yeah, they sent me a catalog too, I guess. But there's their part number. They charged me, I can't read it, $59.99. Double the price. Shame on you, Ecklers. <laughs> you may say, hey, you got the seal, but the point being, um, if you're looking at building a car, or repairing a car, or restoring a car, do some research. You know, order ahead of time if you have to to get what you need, because I probably won't be ordering from Eckler's anymore. I want to be honest with you and give you information. $59.99 is a grand total, and then shipping, of course, was $15.87. Um, and on the shipping and handling for uh, from Classic, now this is for all three, all three the trunk seal, the front door seals, and the and the weather stripping. It was sixteen ninety five. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. You're welcome. Now, what's what I want to show about doing these seals is these are press in. There is no, I mean, you could, there are some places you could add some glue, and it talks about putting on some glue, but the seals themselves have push pins. All right? Simple little push pins. What's interesting is this company makes a left and right seal, which is good. And if you'll notice, that push pin is red. There's a reason for that. That's your start point. I'm going to show you that in a minute, but that's your that's your start point. On the driver's side, it's red. On the passenger side, it's green, which coincidentally is also how you indicate an aircraft. If an aircraft is flying at night and you see lights on it, red lights are on the left, green lights are on the right. I think it's the same way with boats, but that's, that's, to me, I just thought that was interesting that Soft Seal did that as well. Now the front door seal is one piece, complete loop, right? This is one thing I don't like, and I don't know why they did this. I'm just pointing this out. I'm using these seals anyway. There may be another manufacturer out there who does it differently. The rear door is split. Why? I don't know. I've already done the doors on the other side. And I had to, where the where this, this meets is up in the forward corner, right up here. And, I mean, I had to just, I had to glue them together. Kind of like that. I mean, it's, I mean, I know you're, it's not my responsibility to bond those together. I don't understand why these are an open loop and front doors a closed loop. Okay, with that said, the process is pretty simple. Basically, we're going to just take some tools, whatever you, you know, there might be a variety of tools you use, and I'm going to show you some of that to remove these seals. There may be a little bit of glue residue, which you can scrape off. Otherwise, it's really just remove and replace. The only issue that I've had besides that corner being not connected is the doors on the passenger side shut a little bit, you know, a little bit harder to shut. And that's normal. You're going to get seals until they conform and compress somewhat you're going to run into that situation so the rear door oddly enough shuts really nice but the front door it bounces off before the secondary latch can catch so you get the primary latch and then you have to like push your thigh into it and push on it to get the second one to latch but until that seal compresses that's the way it's going to be so I'm going to get some tools together and reset the camera and just start taking this thing apart and we'll swap out some seals. Okay, so as you can see the door is open and I'm going to be using a variety of tools. One of them is just this little puller or plug puller, you know, commonly used uh, in the collision industry to pull panels apart that are held together with push pins. So that's all this is. And then I have a unique set of needle nose pliers 
I think I picked these up at Harbor Freight. Yeah, Pittsburgh brand. It says so right on there, so that's Harbor Freight. What I like about these is I can get some leverage. And I'll show you that in just a minute. And then I also have a little pair of needle nose pliers. And I'll show you that as well. So to start with, I gotta get rid of what's left of this old dry seal. And you can you can hear it crunchy, right? So, you know, you can use a variety of, of methods or means to get this off, um, but it's just going to take time and, you know, pulling things apart. Find a way to get behind it, get it off. Now, like I said, some of these may be glued, but these, very brittle. So that's the process. I'll go around the perimeter and get all of this off. Now, yeah, you can just you can just hear that. <laughs> Alright, you can see these hopefully you can see these pins are exposed now. So let's zoom in a little bit. And you can see there's little pins. These I've tried a couple different things. Now mind you, this isn't a show car. You know, this isn't something I'm trying to really protect that much. But I could take this one and pull out like that. That was pretty easy. In other areas, I found that I took the long needle nose and I could hook into them and use it leverage. Whoops, sorry. I could, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get that better angle. All right, so with the needle nose, the long needle nose, I found that I could actually get in and kind of use it as leverage and pry and pull up on it. Now, this worked good in, uh, in certain areas. It may not do as well in others. And you can see the plastic is wanting to give up. But still, with a little bit of leverage, it pulls right out. So that's the two basic methods that I used. Otherwise, I have had, you know, the pin break. And when it does that, all you can do is just push the pin, the base of the pin, back in the hole and move on. There's no way to recover that. It will eventually work its way down and won't cause any problems. So again, what I plan to do is get the rest of this loose and I'll just go around breaking it off. And then remove all these pins. All right, so the seal is completely removed. I wiped it down with a paper towel. Uh, again, this is just an old car, nothing overly spectacular. So I'm just doing the basics at this point. Now, I pointed out earlier that the red pin is your start point. And you may ask yourself, well, what does that mean? Where's my start point? Because, you know, it's just a series of holes all the way around. Well, basically, you know, as I, I, I did this on the other side with the green, if you look at the pattern, right, and you can kind of guess here, maybe about four inches of this pattern. Come down a little further, about four inches, about four inches, and then you're hit with this. This is about two and a half inches. So that means there's a specific point on this door where there are two holes that are, you know, two and a half inches or so apart from each other. The rest of the pattern is basically all, you know, from that point on, about four, about four, all the way around. There's a little variance here between these two, but not, not like those other ones. But you can see all the, and there's a little bit, that's more like three and a half. But there's only one spot where just two of them are close together. Now you can see this one has one, two, three that are pretty close to the same gap and then a little bit bigger and then it goes back to that kind of four inch pattern. So just know that whenever you're doing these, line it up with the holes that match the door. So there's only one spot that there's two holes that close together. With that said, I already know I've marked it up here in the corner. This is where you start with the red pin. And then you just put it all the way around the door. And when you get to the end, decide what you're going to do with that corner. As I said, this is the original, or what's left of the original corner. 
and there's no way this is going to survive cutting and fitting. You know, this just it'll just fall apart. Um, you know, it just came, it wasn't glued or anything, so it just came off. But it's just you know crunchy. But it gives you an example of what that corner is supposed to look like. Now, I was hoping that there was something in the packaging that maybe gave you a little, you know, connector, but there's nothing. So do some research. Again, this is soft seal, and that's what I'm using. So let me get started and get the seal in place, and then I'll finish up. I want to point this out, too. These push pins need to be seated all the way in. All right, so sometimes you might have to encourage them a little bit with a mallet. And you have to hit the gasket and kind of knock them in. It wouldn't hurt to use a little piece of plastic or something, you know, as a punch, but sometimes they need a little help. That was the car, not me. All right, so there's my red one. I'm gonna start right here in this corner. And it can be tricky to seat these because they want to go a little sideways and you can feel it through the uh, through the rubber gasket so Now, as you can see, this is where I had that, uh, I had some tape on here marking where the red pin started. But, see how these corners, I know it's kind of hard to see this, maybe. I can't get the camera that way far enough. But, these corners are just out in space, you know. So, it's up to us to secure those. Now, what I'm going to use is some of this 3M black super weather strip and gasket adhesive and the plan is I'll put some on this upward leg and then put some tape on it to hold it in place while it cures and then I'll come back and do the other one later I may even shut the door to try to keep it in place but this stuff I've already shown you before it's really sticky so you just be careful putting it on. I don't want to, I don't know if I'm going to block the camera or not. I'm going to try not to. But I'm going to put some on here um, and get it on that contact area for the seal. I know. Hard to see through a wall, right? But I'll have that where I want it and then get some tape. Might help to tear that off before you start and uh, just tape it down. Make sure it stays in that corner. And I think I'll shut the door, so let me move the camera back just a little bit. It's going to take a little more effort than how I did it before because I've shown the front door and the back before. There's nothing there, nothing to stop it. So I'm going to let that sit and cure out. And while I'm doing that, I'll go ahead and remove the gasket on the front door. I don't need to film that since you've already seen the back. It's the same process. Break the gasket off, pull all the pins, move on. All 
All right, so I've removed the seal, made sure I removed all the little push pins, and then wiped it down with a paper towel. And now I'm going to show you this because, as I talked about with the other one, and of course the red push pin, the rear door, it was in the upper uh, corner that you started, I think it was on the vertical part, uh, you started with the push pin. You would think, well, should it be the same for the front door? And no, it's not. And obviously I'm going to tell you to do your own homework on this, you know, verify, but I can tell you on this car, the start point, the start point is this corner right here. And that's where the red pin goes. Now, it could be different for other cars. I don't know. I'm just pointing it out for this 65 Impala. So I'm going to start with that one. Well, that'll really test your finger strength. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Nobody's going to want to do a thumb war with you if you've been doing these all day. <laughs> now I'll go around and double check, make sure they're all in. If I need to encourage any of them with a mallet, I will. And then, I don't, I don't see any reason to add any adhesive anywhere. It follows the door very well. So... I don't see any reason for it. Um, yeah. So I'll double check these pins and then we'll see how it shuts. I've decided to add a little bit of adhesive down here in this corner. It's pulling away just a little bit because there's no pins in that area. I know it's hard to see from way up there, but um, I'm just going to add some. And then I'll shut the door and that'll hold it in place while it dries. Let's see how that door shuts. <laughs> ah, that'll be airtight. Good. Now I'll come back and double check the rear door and see if that's ready for the other part to be glued. Good. The first part is holding very nicely. So now I want to get this part in and I'll do the same thing. I'll add some adhesive. It's funny how adhesive is just a fancy word for glue, right? We always would have said glue in school or something, but no, today it's adhesive. So I'll put some, there's two kind of uh, channels, let's say, up here, and it's hard to see, but it's got like a, I don't know, like the bottom half of an H shape. So I just laid two patterns, and then I'll, you know, tape it down, same thing. And shut the door. Let the pressure do its job. <laughs> okay, that's going to be the end of this video. Now I went over removing the seal, removing the pins, reinstalling the seal, Make sure those push pins are seated so that you don't have anything interfering with the door closing. Up here on this rear door, unfortunately, the way the seal is made, and again, I don't know why, but you know, it's just those two pieces coming together. And I still have the tape on there. I'm going to let that cure. But that's really all I can do. I did think about possibly taking a piece of the leftover truck seal. Just a quick follow up. I did take a piece of that leftover foam from the trunk seal and just created a corner 
and I may trim this down just a little bit more hopefully you can see what I'm aiming at here but uh, I just wanted something to fill that corner so now when I shut the door I know it's hard to see but that filled that corner and finished off the seal now we shouldn't have to do this but you know sometimes you have to make adjustments I still have to let the uh, adhesive cure on the front door as well but I'm happy with the way these doors are actually closing you know before you could just push on them and they would just click but there was no uh, resistance on the seal and I drove this earlier today to check the brakes and I noticed I could see light coming through where the front seal is supposed to be or contacting the uh, A-pillar up here so obviously it was you know going to be leaking air now I can't say it's going to make the car all that much quieter or anything like that but now it has new seals in it so that'll help I also wanted to point out that the trunk seal you know when I first put that in it was kind of hard to shut and now since it's been sitting and this you know the seals compressed it shuts just fine I know there's some comments about that I can pop it open and just click shuts real nice so I'm not worried about that otherwise I think that's gonna be it for this car and what does that mean well it means it's going back to the man that owns it and I can get started on the Brooklyn Pony. That's what I'm going to do next week. I'm going to be working on the Brooklyn Pony. I've got that transmission cross member now that I can fit up and make sure things are going to line up correctly. I'm going to put the transmission that's for the car instead of the dummy transmission I have. I'm going to put the actual transmission in. I'm going to put the plate in, you know, between, <clears throat> not the torque converter, but I'll get the, you know, transmission in place. And then I may even do a, a double check on the headers, a variety of things, you know, just, just trying to make sure everything's going to fit. Also, I have the uh, stock height spindles that I need to work on. That'll come later, but I'm just letting you know that I have those because we're changing it from the 2-inch drop in the front to a standard height to give it a little more ground clearance or get it back up close to where it should be and address that. So... Lots of stuff going on, and I know there will be even more. <laughs> There's always more. Oh, and don't forget, Classic Industries gave me the better price over Eckler's. Just saying. If I can give you some advice and give you some help, I'm going to do it. So, I don't know. I don't know why they're, I don't know why they're so, they price so high if they think that it's something special, but it's the exact same product. <laughs> okay enough enough rambling um again next week i'll be getting back on a brooklyn pony i have um another viewers project to make if you haven't seen been following on those I, i've kind of mixed them a little bit i have viewers projects which are videos that are submitted by other people that i work into a video and then i have one called road shows where it's Kind of the same concept, but I actually go to somebody's house and I film their car. This past week, I posted a video from Paul on his pair of 69 Cougars. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. And I believe the next viewer's project video will be about another Cougar. And that is an amazing story that you need to hear. So we'll get that put together and get it out very soon. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You know, hit the like button, thumbs up, comment, hit the bell notification, all those cool things that help the channel grow. I'm now at 40,700 and change. And I mean, it's just sky's the limit. So hopefully one day I'll have 100,000 and a million or who knows. But it's all thanks to you for being part of this. So until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya.
pick up from the fan down. Keep the noise. And while I was doing that video, I talked about some other things that I had planned on. <clears throat> no. And when it showed up, it also had problems with the brakes. So, <sighs> so I'm gonna get some of this on here now. This will, if you get on your fingers, just know it's it's gonna be there for a while. It takes a little effort to get that off. And. Um, Okay, that's going to be the end of this video. Close, I guess, is all I can say. I can't make a piece that'll fit that. You know, and I, I could probably snip something and make a little corner, but I don't know that it's worth it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know why they're, I don't know why they're, so, so they're priced so high if they think they have something special, but it's the exact same product. If I can give you some advice and give you some help, I'm going to do it.